and we are live it's wednesday the 26th of june the time is nine o'clock and this is vt talk as you will be able to see i am joined again by the two roses that absolutely confirm that i am a thorn in a lot of people's sides those two roses are the lady with the smile stick the effervescent loveliness the beautitious bubbliness that is the one and only sav in the doghouse over there that's sav there say hello sav hello how are you diddling cock all right i'm fine how's yourself good I'd, i'm very very well show us the smile stick again so that the people on video on demand get to see it this ends up as another fault or someone's gonna die well Miss... if you, you can give them the smile stick so they'll die happy Miss smile stick there you go that's it don't that, never it. be done again that's that's sav and her smile stick and in in the big monitor which we'll we'll call the cat house for tonight no it's dog house cat never mind in the big monitor we have laurie and c from eka as ever was down there in boss castle it has to be pronounced has it not how are you this fine sunny evening i'm good i feel like i'm missing out on the smile stick thing because I, I don't know what it is ah well you'll catch up on video on demand won't you I'm going to have to now, yeah. yeah. Well, you see, this is this is how we increase the video on demand count. We bring people on to do the show that can't see it while it's going out. It's the only <laughs> way, you know. We'll try anything once. We'll try anything once. Tonight, somewhat of a special night in many ways, um, all sorts of different ways. We'll be covering various different items of news and making an announcement about what I'm referring to at the minute as the balloon up. Only it's not up. All will be revealed after the titles, which are coming in now. And we are back in the room following the titles here on VT Talk with myself, David Dawn, uh, with Sav Kirstein and with Laurie and C. The three of us here to talk about stuff that's going on. And I suppose one of the biggest items of news that will hit many people that uh, go around the forums, as it were, would be the news that today, Totally Wicked, saw Jason crop a hand in his resignation. And indeed, well, let's have a look and see how it was announced. And it says here... Totally Wicked's managing director agrees to step down after inappropriate emails. Jason Cropper, founder and CEO of Totally Wicked eLiquid, has agreed to resign from the multi-million pound global business that he created. The board of directors concluded on Wednesday 26th of June by unanimous agreement that Mr Cropper should step down. Totally Wicked is currently committing significant company resources and capacity to bring the necessary influence to ongoing European and national legislative processes that are seeking to effectively ban recreational use of electronic cigarettes. The company believes that both the MHRA and the EU Parliament have neither legitimacy to act nor the interests of public health in mind in their collective attempt to medicinally regulate electronic cigarettes. Notwithstanding the company's position, it has recently become aware to the company directors that Mr Cropper has, on a number of occasions, made direct contact with both Ms Linda McCavan, MEP, a lead rapporteur of the EU Envy Committee, and Mr Jeremy Mean of the MHRA. In these communications, Mr Cropper has called into question the legitimacy and motivations of both of these two individuals and the organisations that they represent. On reviewing these communications, the board has decided that the content does not reflect the views of the company. Mr Cropper has been unwilling to retract these comments and has agreed amicably that in order to protect the business, its customers and staff during a time of impending regulation and leading process, legal process, I, uh, I do apologise, that he should resign his position as CEO. The board was left with no option but to agree his resignation. Business Development Director Fraser Cropper will assume the role of CEO. Now, there's been a lot of speculation on Twitter as to what the content of those emails 
might have been and whether or not they were the emails that Linda McCavan referred to at the workshop on the 7th of May and has also referred to them in NV committee meetings uh, in, a, in a more kind of slanted way. Um, my own opinion on this is that th that might be the case, but I don't think speculation is going to help. However, I do think that we probably need to be mindful that if Totally Wicked as a company isn't happy with what Jason Cropper has emailed at these two particular people, then it may well be that there is some level of damage limitation that we need to be aware of. And that kind of leads us nicely into the actions that we need to be taking. Um, all of us, I think, as vapors in the UK, need to be writing to MEPs and MPs, both contingents now, it's fairly obvious, because of the MHRA and the fact that the EU thing is ongoing. And I think we need to be extremely polite in how we do this. There's no point in going in and calling them a set of custardly custards and asterisks all over the place. But I do think we need to be contacting and putting our side of the story in terms of our story, as in how it affects us as individuals, pardon me, um, what the story is, how you got into it, how you were using it, uh, why it's so good for you, and why some of the other items that we'll be covering in the news, newsy sort of stuff tonight, are so important and why both the MHRA and the EU need to be attaching importance to those and perhaps ignoring the well, whatever the content is that totally it's not happy with the emails that Jason sent, then we, we need to try and offset that, I think. Um, I'm, I'm going to throw it across to Lorian and, and say, would, would you agree with what I've just said? I would agree completely with what you just said. We do. I know a lot of us have already written to our MPs. I know I not only wrote to my MP, but wrote to him repeatedly and then had a meeting with him, I think, and I learned a big lesson there which was none of the replies I got from my MP were actually from him at all. They were from his aide, and despite the fact they were all personal, when I met him, he didn't have a clue who I was. Um, so I think it's really important that only we're writing to them, if we're then meeting with them, we need to know that when we meet with them, we're not going to have to be starting from scratch and explaining everything to them. In indeed, absolutely. Now, when, when you met with your MEP, your MP rather, you said that he had no clue who you were, what you were talking about or anything. This had all been set up by AIDS. How did it go after that? I mean, is he wiser now? Is he is he singing from the same hymn sheet? Is he closer to us? What what, what What's the crack there? It's difficult to say because I had half an hour with him and he was very strict on that half hour. Um, and because he had no clue about any of my letters, despite the fact that he sent me a letter saying he was disgusted by the stock responses. Um, I had actually spent half an hour talking about what was in my letters. I didn't even get the chance to... I, I was back to scratch. He didn't know what an electronic cigarette was. He didn't know about any regulation. He didn't know who used them. He didn't know anything about them whatsoever. So what I actually spent was half an hour educating somebody when he should already have known all of that, and I could have spent half an hour talking about the stuff that matters. Indeed, did he did he go away um, more more educated than than he came? If you like, was he aware of what an e-cig is and how important they are to work to people in this country? Oh yeah, there's no question he left like that. I mean, uh, my hope is he was talking about his sister was being a heavy smoker and all this kind of stuff. And my my hope is at least he can go back to her and say maybe try this. Um, interestingly, I also noticed his name was on the early dates in support of that early day motion to. Um, dissolve the MHRA for corruption um, and I happened to mention that in my meeting with him so I'm hoping that kind of set some bells off in his head. Yes, yes one would uh, one would hope that that would click and if, if people aren't uh, aren't fully aware of that can you explain to them what this early day motion is and who signed it and, and what it's all about? The early day motion I can't I cannot remember now for the life of me who it was who actually who's whose early day motion it was, but essentially it was calling into question the validity of the MHRA and whether or not they can be trusted. Um, in, and they, they cited examples along the thalidomide line and there was another one he cited examples of. This was back in February, I think it was. So it was well before any of this. Um, just the idea that the whole revolving door process with pharmaceuticals, um, that it isn't in the interest of public health, that it shouldn't be essentially being run by these vast pharmaceutical companies. And there were the original person who put the question out and there were 13 other MPs cross-party who agreed with the motion. 
Yes, I, uh, I went and had a look at it earlier on today and there is growing support for this early day motion and it would appear that uh, our representatives in Parliament are about as happy with the MHRA as we are and well they might be. As they pointed out uh, in the motion, um, in the States, thalidomide was identified very quickly and lots of um, reparation was made to sufferers from thalidomide. In the UK, not so much. And the same has applied with, with, with various other drugs. Sav, I'm going to throw it across to you. I'm, I'm sure chat have got a few bits and bobs to say at this point in time. Um, and I'd love to know what they are. Mainly chat have been talking about the responses that they've been getting from their MPs or for a lot of chat the lack of response that they're still getting from their MPs. Mm -hmm. But John Bon Juan has said, got a great answer from my UKIP MEP um, this week and he's got that on his Facebook page if people want to see it. Very Boring has said, I meet with my MP tomorrow. And Pete Dermody has said, my friend gave his MP a mechanical mod to use for a week. I thought that was brilliant. I'd love to know how that went. Mm. I would love to know how that went. Um, an MP with a mechanical mod using it for a week. One assumes, therefore, that the MP must have been a smoker. And if that's the case, then, yeah. Pete, if, if, you, if you can clatter in what the response was when you got it back, if you got it back, because, trust me on this one, if your MP was anything like Keith, he's probably still got it. So if you can clatter into chat and let us know, Sav, let me know as soon as that's there. Will do. Because I'd love, to, I'd love to know how that's gone. Now, he says it was only a few days ago. You'll know next week an update. All right, good. We'll hold you to that. We'll hold you to that. Definitely. In fact, might even bring you on to tell us if that's okay. Don't want you to run. No, <laughs> if, if you could, that would be brilliant because I would love to share that. I would love mm. to share that with people and, and, and just see how it's gone. Um, one of the things that struck me earlier on. Um, and, and I'm going to say again what I said last week. If you're not on Twitter, you should be. There's all kinds of good conversation going on on there. And it's not just kind of forum-led stuff, which is all good in itself. But on Twitter, we're getting all kinds of folks in there. But Lorian, wasn't it you that, that, that said everything seemed to have gone a little bit quiet, that the pedal seemed to have been taken off the metal? Metal. Oh, it's going to be one of those. I can see it coming. <laughs> uh, the the, the pedal had been taken off the metal with regard to the tobacco products directive um it was on twitter it was actually i think it was pete demondi who's demodi who said it and i fully agree with him there has definitely been um a slackening off um in the sort of the last month definitely um which i think is kind of natural unfortunately oh, it applies to everything oh absolutely absolutely and i was just gonna kind of explain a little bit about where, about where we are um, because I find this quite interesting. At the moment, four of the committees in Europe that produce opinions for the Envy Committee have produced their opinions and they are slightly mixed. Um, Inco, we don't really like. Jury, we really, really like. Uh, Inter, we're so so about but we're more liking rather than hating and, and so on and so forth the thing is of course that these opinions get fed into envy and in envy they'll be taken into account but they may not be acted on effectively what the opinions are are amendments to the the directive as the commission came out with it and just sitting talking with various people during the course of the day and, and lord knows i've been talking to a lot of people during the course of the day and you'll find out why very shortly um there's a lot of people are kind of weary they are tired this has been going on for over six months it's nearly seven months since the whole thing started and of course it drains you it does because Time after time on shows like this, on Twitter, in forums, all over the place, people are saying, write your MP, write your MAP, write your MP, write your MAP, write your MP, write your MAP. And folks get sick of hearing it, but trust me, now, now is the time. <coughs> now is the time to really press your foot to the firewall, to really make your voices heard. And to that extent, we have something coming up. And I'm calling it, 
well, I'm, it, it's been known as the Brussels vape meat, and that basically is what it is. And I'm going to give you full details of that in between the two halves. But we're doing this because now is the time. Now is the time when we've really, really got to make our voices heard. We need to be talking to MPs, as Very Boring is doing tomorrow, as Lorian did last week or the week before, Lorian? Uh, week before. Week before last. So Lorian was doing it then. I've got a meeting with mine coming up in July and Keith's going along. So it'll be the early part of July when we meet because we've now got a dual threat. We've got the threat that the MHRA, even if the EU goes the way we want it to, the MHRA might well decide, well, sod it, we're going to go anywhere. In which case, it's very much a case of see you in court, suckers, because you ain't going to win. That might well happen. But what we've got to try to do, and, and here's why it's important, we've got to try to get e-cigs protected. Protected throughout the EU. Now, it's all well and good us sitting here and saying, well, we're fine, it's okay, we can manage, we can bring in from China, we can do this, we can do that, we can do the other. But there are people in other countries, and I can't believe I'm saying this because this is not normally the way I would have felt, but I do now. There are people in other member states of the EU who will not be able to get e-cigs at all if they're made medical, no matter what they are. They just will not be able to get them because the pharmacies won't carry them. It's that simple. It is that simple. We've got to protect them. We've got to act now and we've got to act hard. And to some degree, we've got to act fast to make sure that we do everything possible to protect e cigs from within the EU. And I'll tell you for why. Bottom line on it is really, if the European Parliament decides that e cigs aren't medicines and, as Rebecca Taylor would have it, cannot be classified as medicines unless they are claimed to be medicines by the manufacturer or vendor, then everybody's happy, everybody's safe, we can still keep on getting them. And that's the most important part of it, I think, because I would hate to think that I was going to go on holiday to, oh, I don't know, Lithuania, Poland, any of the, the smaller member countries and not be able to get juice, batteries, whatever it happened to be. That's maybe it's a little bit selfish. You may or may not agree. But that's, I think, where we need to be on that one. Uh, your take on it, Laurie? Yeah, I do. I, I totally agree with you. I think um, that if apathy on our part essentially almost makes us as bad as what's happening on the other side of the fence because we're uh, of all the vapors in Europe all the e-cig users we're, we're a tiny percentage and I said this last week if we don't do something um, even of the current crop of e-cig users are screwed for want of a better word and then if you look further down the line every smoker and every child or adult that takes up smoking in future we've let them down as well by at least not even trying we've got to do something and at least know we've done our best absolutely absolutely I'd rather go down knowing I did the best I could than not do the best I could. Uh, Sav, what's chat saying on all of this? Because I, I, I might have been coming on a bit strong, I don't know. No, chat, I've totally agreed. I mean, Vapor Man came up with a comment earlier, which I feel I have to read, and he says, my MEP said that e-cigs are unsafe as it was cancer caused by nicotine that killed his sister, which just shows the level of education that we still need to keep pushing at. Oh, God, yes. Um, Rachel Coffey has said, I understand the weariness, but we'll never forgive ourselves if we don't do our best now when it matters. Whip it up 69 says, I can keep writing to my MEPs, but will it just be another similar letter? Do I keep writing? Yeah, I uh, would, uh, if, if I can answer that, yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Keep on keeping on. Never, ever give up. Nil carborundum illegitimi. Do not let the bath plugs grind you down. If they keep sending the same boilerplate, keep sending the letters, keep sending the emails, drown them in them. Make it so that it's impossible for them to open their inbox, no matter what email client they use. Make it impossible for them to open their inbox without there's an e-cig email in there supporting e-cigs. That's what we've got to do. And it's going to keep it at the forefront of their mind. One of the things we were talking about earlier on, uh, on Twitter, a lot of the MEPs that have been really engaged and engaging with us for the first 
three, four months of the year, they're now having to look at other stuff. They're not, they're not just dealing with e-cigs, they're dealing with all kinds of things. They're dealing with, um, oh, there's, there's budgets, they've got the elections coming up, they've been looking at olive oil <laughs> and not, mm -hmm. and they've, been, they've got all kinds of stuff that they've got to focus on. And if we don't keep reminding them that we exist, if we don't keep on saying, oh, by the way, don't forget we're still here. Don't forget that if you get it wrong, you're going to be killing us and many more like us. If they don't keep getting those reminders, it's very easy for them to concentrate on something else. But we need to do it in a way that makes them think, these are very reasonable people. And the facts that they're putting across are very reasonable. Keep pointing them at Clive Bates' blogs. He's put a couple of crackers up over the last couple of weeks. I can't recommend them enough. The man is, is just brilliant. His analyses are so good, so spot on, and incontrovertible when you, when you go through and read the logic. You, you can't argue against it, probably because he's mostly right. Sorry, Sav, I interrupted something chronic. What, what, have, uh, what, what else have we got? Absolutely fine. Uh, Rachel Coffey's also said, I'm in Canada, but I'm pushing my friend in Denmark to go after her MEP on this. And she's also said, because there are lots of people, especially current smokers, who wouldn't manage if his medicalization nonsense went forward. Uh, Ratfinks has said, I'm slightly worried regarding constantly emailing that will turn people against our cause that are currently on side. Um, Asterix has said, I know it's a big ask, but it might be worth while putting pen to paper and getting the attention of an MEP or MP that way. Yes. And Mush13 has said, it's time for direct action. And if, if ever there was a cue to go to the adverts and come in with the direct action that we're going to be taking, that would be it. Thank you so much for that. That <laughs> made the, uh, the segue into the adverts that much easier. We'll be back right after this to talk about direct action. And we're back in the room here on VT Talk on Wednesday, 26th of June, 2013. And we went into the adverts talking about direct action and direct action is what is going to be taken. On the 10th of July, coming up, it's a fortnight. Yeah, fortnight today. The Envy Committee begins the process of voting on the amendments um, and the whole text of the Tobacco Products Directive. And you may well recall, if you were watching the show last week, that Jerry Stimson came up with the idea of holding a vape meet on the steps or in the plaza of the European Parliament. And so we've decided we're going to do it. 
Um, and here's how it's going to work. There is a train on which I have already booked a number of seats and paid for them, um, which are going to be available to people to go across there. Now, the people that those seats will be available to really need to be folks that wouldn't otherwise be able to afford to go, uh, perhaps because they've got to travel from far-flung corners of the UK or because they've got no easy way of getting across to Brussels. Um, and I'll cover that a little bit more as we go on. But the idea is we're going to get the train or fly or whatever across to Brussels and meet up there around about noon Brussels time, which is one o'clock hour. Is it one o'clock or 11? And either way, it's not our time. It's an hour different. We'll be at 11 o'clock. They'll be at, uh, at 12. So we get there at noon. And that'll give us time to blow up 2,000 black balloons that will be logoed up and Lorian knows all about that so she'll fill us in on that in a little while um, and we're going to do it with lung capacity not helium because we want to demonstrate that as vapors as e-cig users we have the lung capacity of 16 year olds that we're no longer smokers we're not coughing and wheezing and stuff like that and we're going to blow the balloons up 2,000 of them and the 2,000 represents the number of smokers who will die per day if the EU gets this wrong. When they're blown up at one o'clock, everybody will have a pin. Bring one with you, or I'll bring a couple of thousand with me as well. And then we're going to pop the balloons, not all at once, but like a salvo of gunfire. And that should last probably five minutes or so. Now, on the train going over to Brussels, there will be a BBC reporter. I have had that confirmed today. There'll also be two cameramen and there'll be other news outlets also at the plaza as we do this. Not only that, but the French are sending a contingent, the Germans are sending a contingent and we're getting in touch with vapors organisations all over the EU trying to get them to send people as well. So the number that we've got on the coach is around about 50 some seats are already taken up obviously we've got to get this bbc journalist with us and the two cameramen and there's going to be some uh, seats taken up by the people that have sponsored the uh, the whole thing for us because they've generously donated a lot of these seats for us to use um so the idea is as i say we'll meet up at around about eight o'clock uh, at the eurostar terminal Tickets will be there, you get on, and those are the people that need those. If you can afford to get there under your own steam, like you can fly from Manchester Airport, I believe, I think it's for 1999, isn't it, Sav? Yeah, 1999 each way. 1999 each way from Persinchester Airport. So you can, you can, you know, it's not an awful lot of money. And if you're close to Manchester, that's probably the best bet to do it that way and meet up with everybody over there. I would love to think that we would get between all of the countries that are there over 300 people and i'm told and jerry stimson knows about these things i'm told if we get 50 we've got a good news story if we get 200 we've got a superlative news story if we get more than that it'll go worldwide it will attract all of the news um, outlets worldwide because this will be unprecedented this will be direct action of the kind you've never seen now you probably want to know how the hell do i go about getting in on this here's the answer you need to email us if you need to use the sponsored seats you need to email us at info at vaportrails.tv i've got to have the list of names ready really by next wednesday or thursday at the latest so you would need to email us over the next couple of days or perhaps grab hold of me at the knees mate um there'll be i'm thinking around about 37 seats available something like that um and they need to go to the people that most need them i've got to be honest about that they do need to go to the people that most need them i i, I can't stress this enough if you can afford to get there under your own steam and you are as passionate about it as i am then please do that we want to get people everybody there we want to make it all inclusive we want as many people to get there as possible because and this is quite important we've timed it so that the balloon popping 
will happen during the course of the MEP's break between their morning committee meetings and their afternoon committee meetings. So they will have time to talk to us. And I'm also going to approach MEPs to see if we can get passes to go into the committee as they discuss things on the afternoon. And I think it might just concentrate their efforts a little if they know the people who are going to be directly affected by what they're discussing are sitting listening to it and perhaps occasionally going tut tut, that sort of thing. Lorian, can you bring us up to speed on the balloons? Because I know you've, you've been dealing with this a little bit, haven't you? I have, yeah, and there's actually an interesting um, thing came up with, to do with the colour of the balloons, and I, I did say, we'd d try and discuss it tonight and see what people think. And I see my original, I think everybody's original thing was them being a black balloon, um, and the, the guy, Johnny, who's doing it, was thinking maybe white, and I kind of, my first thought was, oh, no, they've got to be black. Thinking about it, these are smokers who we sympathise with. So do you know what? Maybe white isn't a bad colour. Because if we were releasing a dove of peace, it too would be white. This, this is symbolic in a way that is very sad and very touching and very moving. It's 2,000 lives. I mean, it is astonishing. Why not actually have them as white? It's as a, a moving moment, it's, why it's not a, white? It, it, that is, that is a, a, it's actually a good thought and one that, that hadn't occurred to me. And no. I think we should ask Chat to, to let yep. us know what their thoughts are. But what's Chat had to say so far, Sav? Um, we've had Rachel Coffey's asking, will Andy and the SWAF team be filming this? Yes. Yeah, There's so many positive comments. People saying this is amazing. And Grumpy Vapor wants to have your babies, Dave. Um, is, um, is Grumpy Vapor male or female? I didn't ask. Could you? <laughs> you just did. <laughs> Safer Six Stars has said vendors need to turn out for this. Um, Whippet Up 69 says, what's the date again? The 10th of July. Wednesday, the 10th of July. Excellent. Funny Trickster says, if we get lots of public and vendors over, this will make a big story. And a comment that's come in from Pillbox38, who is Jason, has said, Dave, I will throw in another five grand, so book more seats. Wow. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, you, you, you heard what Jason said. Um, so, wow. Mm -hmm. Oh. Wow. Right? Um, okay. Uh, I consider it done. I, I consider it done. That, that. Sav? Um, no, Lorian? Yeah. <laughs> Grab it. <laughs> pick one we're both here um i yeah i was, I was just a bit stunned by that as well actually that would be um quite astonishing i think it actually shows just how important this is like really important this is actually an opportunity for us to massively show that we are reasonable and polite and intelligent people not rabid tin wearing lunatics um and that yeah this is wow five grand um that's a big thing that's 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 Yes, that would double the numbers. That would double the numbers. I'll get on to that first thing in the morning. Um, brilliant. Are there any any questions about the, the, the timetabling or, or stuff like that, Sav? Um, people are asking sort of the logistics of it. Um, you sort of Eurostar flights, where do, do we know where the, the flights from Manchester land, that type of thing, and timings and stuff. It's all very much logistics and people are getting very enthusiastic and passionate about this right well to the best of my knowledge uh, the flights from manchester land at brussels south uh, uh yeah because and that's that's the reason that we can't actually do the helium filled balloons and let them go up in the air because we're right onto the flight path and apparently pilots are not that keen on flying through what looks like a flock of seagulls which you can understand, and I've just realised I'm looking in the wrong camera. We'll try that one. There you go. Seamless telly. It's seamless Pick a telly. Camera. Any Se camera. Seamless. Absolutely seamless. Um, yeah, so as, as we've said, I mean, it's 40 quid return to fly from Manchester, and I think it's about the same from Edinburgh. I'm not sure. You did say that, didn't you, Sav? Um, yes, I think it's either Edinburgh or Glasgow. It's wherever Ryanair fly from is the cheap flights. Yes, so it's, it's, it's Ryanair. Yeah. 
they're, they're the people that do it. And I believe, I remember, I mean, I'm not 100% certain on this, but I think Ryanair used to have the, um, the reputation if you were flying to Barcelona, you actually landed 80 miles out of Barcelona, but it was close enough that they could call it Barcelona. And Brussels was the only one that they actually landed Brussels. Well, Brussels is quite a small place. So. <laughs> it's going to be even smaller by the time we fill it up. Um, this uh, before I forget, there's been a couple of comments about the balloons, um, and people are saying if we're trying to symbolise death due to smoking, it would seem black is the logical colour. The, the, yeah, it, it, it's a funny one, is this one, because what we're trying to symbolise is lives lost. So yeah, black. Lorian, uh, come on, let's 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 have a th threesome, three way on this, and and <laughs> work this out. I, I'm, no, Sav, stop it. Oh, honestly. Why do I do these things? It. I did, that's true. Um, my feeling is, well, I know black works better on cameras. So for that reason, I'm, I'm leaning towards black. But come at me, persuade me, tell me. I'm, so, but this, I'm not in a persuading, because I'm kind of on both sides. I hadn't considered the white thing um, at all until it came up this afternoon. Mm. In my head, it was black um, for obvious reasons. But then I was just concerned that the black thing obviously has very negative connotations and we're not being negative about the people that are dying in that respect. So in that, the balloons need to, could be seen as being respectful as opposed to being negative about the lives that we're representing. So I'm kind of, I'm, I'm on, I'm for once in my life, I'm on the fence. I, that's why I threw, threw it out there for you guys to kind of think about. Okay. We've, we've probably got a couple of days to work this out. We've probably got a couple of days to work this out. Um, I can put a poll up on our Facebook page and if people come over and have a vote on the Facebook page as to what they would like. That, yeah. that, makes, that makes brilliant sense to me. Because we're getting suggestions of red or um, I think it was blue and green for the colours of the EU flag um, or blue and yellow, isn't it? Um, so, you, you, who's, who's, who's the colour blind one on this little <laughs> team of three? That would be you, yeah. Uh -huh, and you're asking me, is it I'm blue and grey? How the hell do I know? I know. I, I'll, I'll be honest, my vote is definitely for black because black yeah. to me signifies a death, um, you know, everything shrouded in black, blah, blah, blah. And as we're, we're basically, as we pop a balloon, we're sy symbolically, oh God, we are symbolically taking the life that could have been spared if the EU got it right. That's the thing we've got to bear in mind. As we pop each balloon, we are taking a life, symbolically, that would have been spared if the EU got it right. And I think it's an extremely powerful message. And I'm really hoping that a whole host of MEPs that so far are going, well, the medicines, of course, the medicines. I won't have anything but medicines. I'm from Horden, the medicines. I'm hoping that we can bring a few of those out and show them what what they are doing, what it'll mean. This is how many people a day will die because of your idiocy, idiocy and lunacy. That's what I want to try and tell them. That's what we need the people there for. Sorry, Sav, I'm sure chat's got more because I can see your eyes are going like this. <laughs> chat is saying, uh, black, it has to be black. Black, no contest. Um, if a band comes in, it will be a black day for all, so it has to be black. And uh, Pillbox38 says, we should get a funeral company to drive in with a coffin and deliver it ceremoniously to the protesters. The BBC will love that. He's not wrong either. Mm. We'll think about this. We will think about this and, 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 and see what we can do because time is really short. It is. So, here's what you need to do. Um, if you can get there under your own steam, brilliant. If you ain't got the money to get there, drop us a line. We're going to put as many seats together as we can, and I'm going to take Jason up on his on his offer. We'll get another. If I can boot another carriage, we'll boot another carriage, and that'll be brilliant. That'll be very nearly a hundred people going over from the UK. If you are watching in France, I don't care where you are in France, be there. If you're in Belgium, be there. If you're in Germany, be there. If you're in Holland, be there. If you're in Greece, be there. No matter where you are in Europe on July the 10th at one o'clock in the afternoon for the balloon popping ceremony. Call it what you will. No matter where you are, be there. B 
be there to do this. Be there to make every vapor's voice in the EU heard. We're going to be there speaking for everybody. If you can be there, be there. And we'll be back in two minutes. Now we're back, we're back in the room, and actually we're back with me, that's just too much for anybody to conscience, let's go back to the full shot. Um, we need to put a, a deadline on all of this, um, and the deadline will be Tuesday night at midnight. That gives everybody chance to check train times, bus times, tube times, whatever times, because we've got to check in for this uh, on the Eurostar at two minutes to eight on the morning, <laughs> of the 10th of July, Wednesday the 10th of July. So you've got to be able to make it for then. Quarter past apparently is no good. They're telling me we've got to be there an hour ahead of time. Uh, so it, it gives you time to check trains and stuff like that and find out what, what you need to do. Please don't take a place if you can't make it. We want as many people there as we can. And I'm, I'm sorry to be, you know, a bit kind of blah about it all, but it, it, it's I've got to be honest, first time I've done a day trip like this. To somewhere foreign you need a passport as well should remind you of that you need a passport have i forgotten anything sav um miles dolphins just asked where is the eurostar terminal uh isn't it st pancreas i think so i can't remember if it's uh yeah i think it is i think it's it? sent hang on a minute i'll just i'll yeah, i'll very I'll, boring says so st pancreas pancreas that <laughs> <laughs> wasn't just me then <laughs> i have a computer and i'm not afraid to use it eurostar where are we at? See if we can find it. Come up, you swain. Oh, yes, the internet is working. Um, it is indeed London St Pancras International. Not St Pancreas, that's an no. entirely different thing. <laughs> London St Pancras International. Um, and we go to Brussels Zuid in two hours and one minute. So we leave at nine and get there at twelve. Work that one out. Because <laughs> there's an hour difference. So the 12 their time is 11 hours. So when we do it at 1300 hours, you see, that's 12 o'clock UK time, which gives the BBC time to transmit its video back so that it can get on the one o'clock news. That's the idea. That's the idea. And there'll be whole hosts of video going on. Now, I should probably also mention that on July the 10th, Wednesday of July the 10th, VT Talk won't be on. Because I'll be in Brussels. Hopefully it's where so. I'll be. Oh, well, I'll be on my way back from Brussels. Um, but on the Thursday, in the Hayes Hour, we will have as much footage as we can gather of what went on. For those people that can't make it, I want to, you know, we'll, we'll show everything that, that, that went on. There's loads and loads of people going and videoing, and I'm taking hard drives for them to download the video onto, so that I'll have loads of stuff to play with. I'll spend all day Thursday 
editing that out. I'm kind of hoping I'll get a swap with one of the other shows so I can put VT Talk out on maybe Monday or Tuesday. Um, and we'll see how that all goes on. Uh, actually, it won't be Tuesday. It would have to be Monday because I've got to go down there on Tuesday night in order to be there because I've got to be there half past seven. <laughs> That's half past seven in the morning. Do, are you aware of half past seven in the morning, Sav? No, I've never seen this before. Apparently it exists. Ah, it's just before the six o'clock when I go to bed, isn't it? Yeah, just after. Ah, just after. Someday. Just after. Anyway, yes, that's that's where it's at. Any more details you want, tweet me. Uh, if you want to apply, Tuesday night, midnight, is the cut-off point. We need the email to info at vaportrails.tv by then. Anything after that, there's not much we're going to be able to do. Uh, as I say, if you can afford to find your own way there, great. And let's leave the sponsored places for those folks that need them. Um, and let's keep our fingers crossed that we have the desired effect and that we make the people in the envy committee sit up and take notice and at the same time make the council sit up and take notice there's other things as well of course that they need to be taken notice of i don't know whether you uh, follow michael siegel um on his blog called the rest of the story if you do uh, then you will have seen what he put up today and if you haven't seen it i'm going to show you it because this, I think, uh, goes a long way towards making the MHRA look more stupid than it's already made itself look. And we already know that there are members of parliament that are aware that the MHRA is not all it should be. But have a look at, 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 uh, at this that Michael's written today in response to Ricardo Pelosi's first ever clinical trial of electronic cigarettes, which finds 13% one-year quit rate among smokers uh, with no interest in quitting. Now, a lot of people will already have read the study, so I'm not going to go through everything line by line. But basically, 300 smokers with no interest in quitting were randomised to one of three groups. E-cigs with 7.2 milligram for 12 weeks, E-cigs with 7.2 milligram nicotine for six weeks, then 5.4 nicotine for six weeks, and zero nic for the full 12 weeks. The subjects were followed for a year. Smoking cessation was verified with exhaled carbon monoxide measurements. The follow-up rate ranged from 55 to 65% because of the loss to follow-up and intent to treat analysis was used. And I need to just tell you a little bit about that because there's some controversy about it. Intent to treat means if you can't get them on follow-up, they discount them and say that they've relapsed. Unlike certain other studies that have been done by how can i put this anti-e-cig researchers who say if they haven't responded to a follow-up then they've quit they've gone the other way they've said it hasn't worked but it might have done anyway let's go back to it shall we here it is um and the rest of the story this is this is the bit that i like opponents of electronic cigarettes can no longer argue that claims of the effectiveness of this product for smoking cessation are based solely on anecdotal or survey evidence. We now have clinical trial evidence that these devices can be useful in smoking cessation. And that means he's using it in the terms and Pelosi's using it in the terms that means you don't light a tab. Not that you've quit nicotine, because you haven't, but you don't light a tab. You've stopped smoking cigarettes. Let's get back to it because this is good stuff. I like it. That was amongst a population of smokers which had no interest in quitting. Despite this worst case scenario, a 13% cessation rate was achieved after one year with the group that received 7.2 milligram nicotine cartridges for 12 weeks and the overall cessation rate was 7.8%. And we'll leave it there. We'll leave it at that point because there's no need to go any further into it. You can read it for yourself if you want to. But bottom line on it is, what Pelosi has said is these things work. Now, think about it. The e-cig they used was a 401. And if you watch the Hears Hour at all, you might have seen a couple of weeks back, we looked at one. And while the flavour out of them is gorgeous, 
they don't do a great deal in terms of nicotine delivery or volumes of vapor or stuff like that in fact how were they described to me by somebody at one of the uh, one of the meets we went to sav was the word crap used i think i i think it was used frequently it was it was used yeah. free and there was another one that rhymed with kite so it wasn't yeah. Not the best e cig on the face of the planet. Trust me on this one. It was it was lovely for flavour, but crap for everything else. And Pelosa himself was saying, if they'd used modern stuff, because this obviously had to happen more than a year ago, if they'd used the stuff we have now, those results would have been even better in terms of efficacy. I, I know you've uh, you've read through this, Lorian, haven't you? What did you make of it? Oh, like is the, uh, the big thing, like you say, is there's two things actually to my mind. One is that yeah, you're looking at old technology that I mean I haven't even seen, let alone used. Um, and if that can be looked at as being more effective than traditional NRT, then by crikey, can you imagine if research was done with some modern technology and the sort of the kind of equipment that we use? It'd be amazing. Um, the other thing I noticed was I don't know if anybody saw Bertolini's text um, tweets about this, instantly rubbishing it. Um, and it's a shame it hasn't actually been picked up positively by any, or it's been positively ignored, I suppose, by all these decision makers, which is a shame. It, it is a bit, yes. I mean, I've, I've been sat looking at, at uh, the Twitter because the Twitter does seem to be kind of where opinions get set to a large degree. And Bertolini, as you see, it came steaming in with this, the study was, no, that's not wrong. That's not right. <laughs> hey, the study was flawed. He's not a good study, is what he was saying, wasn't it? That's what he was saying. You could even, you could see the shrug of the arms, you know? My family was nearly wiped out by the ESIG and, and stuff like that. And he's been challenged. I've challenged him to appear on VT Talk and I'll put Clive Bates opposite him and we'll let the pair of them have at it, hammer and tongs. But I don't think he'll take me up on the offer, do you? I imagine not. Nah, can't see. It'd make for good TV though. It would make fabulous TV. Um, and th there are a few of us that are trying to goad him into doing something like that. Clive Bates has offered him a guest slot on Clive's blog. Be interesting to see whether he takes that up. But he, mm. can't, he said he can't explain method me oh Lord. methodological flaws on Twitter in a few characters. Anybody else can. Apparently, if you are a bigwig at the World Health Organization, you uh, you can't do that. It's the same as certain doctors in the United States of America who are apparently incapable of reading thermometers. Did you know that? Apparently, I'm going to take a drag now off an e-cig, right? And apparently, the vapor is going to be thousands of degrees. It should burn the back of my head off. Shall we see if it does, children? Let's let's have a go. Have a drag on your e cig and see if it comes out at thousands of degrees. No, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. It wasn't at thousands of degrees, and he's admitted his 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 aides and everybody else have admitted he made it up. Ha! We knew they'd been doing it. He made it up. Good grief. They are stooping so low. And I don't know why. I don't know what it is about e cigs that get, gets these people so rabid that they feel the need to lie. Thousands of degrees. Good Lord above. You don't even get that off a soldering iron. It would be like sticking a soldering iron in your mouth and whacking it up on full. One of Gary Dibley's, because his always worked better than mine. Be shocking. Sav? Yes couple of things then I've got a couple of questions um first of all they're all asking you must be made out of asbestos if you didn't blow up with your thousands degrees vapor no it's it's not asbestos it's um it's um oh it's flesh oh damn <laughs> how be it yeah <laughs> um Rachel Coffey has said yeah and 7.2 milligram is awful imagine how much better they do with proper nick levels 45 milligram all the way f what is it FTW for the win. <laughs> I always thought it was something else, you know. Uh, very boring is said. They actually mentioned there are better devices available now, which might make the results better for that trial. Mm -hmm. 
And John Diver has said small numbers in that survey, but I'm exactly the sort of person that makes up that 12%. I tried them as an addition to smoke and then decided immediately that the nick was enough to replace my normal smoke and habit completely. But now, oh. first of all, I have to say huge thank you to Ratfinks because Ratfinks is going to be on our honeymoon on the 10th of July, so she can't come to Brussels. Right. So she is offered to donate £100 towards the cost of the balloons. Aww. Rat thinks you star! What an yes. absolute star you are. That is an amazing offer. Thank you so much. And given where you'll be and what you'll be doing, I mean, I can't blame you for not being in Brussels because if I'd been on my honeymoon, I'm not sure I could have torn myself away. That is... Ah, <laughs> they're amazing i'm I gonna i'm gonna i've amazing. got to say something uh, and and i'm i'm i've got to say this uh, during the course of today i've been the busiest i've been for a long time trying to pull all of this together with phone calls here there and everywhere and twitter conversations and and i've got to say i've had offers of help from people that are looking to take the weight and, and help out and make this thing happen. Those people know who they are. You will get proper recognition. Trust me on this one. You will get proper recognition. But can I just say a big... And Laurie, and you're one of them. You're one of them. There's so many people are offering to help out that are creating websites, that are designing balloon logos, that have just said, what can I do to take the weight? and give you a hand and make this thing work really, really well. And I've got to say from my heart how touched I feel. Now, I'm just a fat bloke with a big gob that doesn't mind using it. That's all I am. And, and seriously, I've, I've said, and Sav, you'll bear me out on this. I've said from day one of Vapor Trails, none of it is about me. It isn't about me, it's about you. I always say the people watching are the important ones and I truly believe it. And you'll back me up, will you not, Sav? Yeah, completely. I've always said it. Always said it and I always yeah. will. And I've been so taken by the folks that are saying, we'll help, we'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do the other. And it, I, I, seriously, I, I, I don't have the words to say thank you forcibly enough. And I don't have the words to say thank you forcibly enough to everybody that watches this show on a weekly, and indeed all of the Vapor Trails shows. I, I don't know, I don't have the words. Th th there's got to be something more than thank you. Do you know what I mean? There's got to be a, a, a bigger thank you. Whatever it is, it, it, this, as you do on Twitter, this, that's, what I want to send to you. It, I, if, if, if I was an American, I would say I was failing the love. Does that work, Sav, or not? It does. But before you get carried away, I've got one more question. Because we're okay. rapidly running out of time. Sorry. Um, Say for six stars has said, can you please confirm which Eurostar train it is, what time, because he's about to book tickets for himself and two of his staff. We are going on the 8.58 from St Pancreas, <laughs> from St Pancreas, <laughs> it's the 08 colon 58, that's the one that we're leaving on, now I'm, I'm told there's seats available on there, um, it wasn't full this morning and it wasn't full later on this afternoon, so the seats available on the 858, if you, if you want to come and join us, if you don't need one of the, the sponsored tickets, and thank you again Jason, um, if if you don't need one of them, and that's the train that we're all going to go on, and I just have a feeling there's going to be a whole Eurostar train full of vapors marching on Brussels, heads held high, balloons blown up, making the case for ACs to the Eurocrats and MEPs that are over there. And I'm telling you now, it's bringing a lump to my throat. The picture is an amazing one. It's well, gorgeous. I just have to say, um, Andy Jeffries just said in chat that he works on, um, I'm guessing it's the Channel Tunnel, he said, and he says he'll make damn sure we get there bang on time. <laughs> thank you. That is amazing. <laughs> hey, listen, everybody, thank you for joining us for the show. Uh, Lorian, thank you for coming in and, and doing what you do so well. Um, uh -huh. and Sav, 
thanks for everything you do and the backroom team Kat and, and Daz and, and, and everybody else that's in the backroom feeding questions and sorting stuff out thank you so much to them I'm going to be in South Shields on Saturday from noon until we get sent home or arrested whichever one comes first I'm looking forward to seeing bazillions of people up there I cannot wait for it yes I'll have my shorts on I might even wear sandals it's going to be lush we'll see you there until then and until well actually until tomorrow night for the here's hour but until we see you at the knees meet in the flesh from Sav from Lorian and from me hey vape on vape hard keep the faith see you next time